Hello, everyone. Welcome to my lecture recital today. Today, I'm going to talk about the preludes for piano of Oliver Messiaen. Oliver Messiaen was a French composer, organist, and ornithologist, one of the major composers of 20th century. He traveled widely and wrote works inspired by diverse influences, ranging from Japanese music, the landscape of Breeze Canyon in Utah, and the life of St. Francis of Assisi. He said he perceived colors when he heard certain musical chords, a phenomenon known as synesthesia in its literal manifestation. Combination of these colors, he said, were important in his compositional process. For a short period, Messian experimented with the parliamentary station, associated with total serialism, in which field he is often cited as an innovator. Synesthesia is a perceptual phenomenon in which stimulation of one sensory or cognitive pathway leads to involuntary experiences in a second sensory or cognitive pathway. Um, already as a young boy, Oliver Messiaen was fascinated by colors. At a tender age of 10, he marveled at the stinted glass uh, windows at the, at the Saint Chapelle in Paris, but somehow mystical experience, which marked him for life. A decade later, the experience of meeting the Swiss artist Charles Blancgasse, who apparently painted the sound of um, the sound he heard from an organ, made a profound impact and intensified, intensified Messian's earlier impressions of the connections between colors and sound. And I realized that I also connected colors to sound, but intellectually, not with the eyes. In fact, when I hear or read music, I always see color complexes in my mind that go with the sound complexes. Messian is based on the top, a basic knowledge of Debussy's Impressionism. He was sent to the Paris Conservatory of Music by his parents when he was 11 years old. The Wilsey had done it at, at that time. Messiaen composed the set of eight preludes for piano in 1928 to 1929, while he was still a student at the Paris Conservatory. He considered them at his, as his first series Endeavor as a composer, his office one. These early pieces already showed a great deal of original ideas, while at the, at the same time display a clear influence from other composers, especially Claude Debussy. An educated listener can easily identify the impressionistic sonorities in the preludes. However, Many of the chords and harmonic progressions are complex and original. Messian's own voice as a composer is already present, although the elements of his mature, mature musical language um, are not yet fully developed. The mod of limited transposition originated from Messiaen's interest in exploring non-diatonic writing, especially rhythm and pitch modes from Indian and other Eastern cultures. Maurice Emmanuel, who also composed using Oriental mods, encouraged him to explore the possibilities of unconventional mods. Emmanuel's most celebrated work is his Sonata No. 4 for piano, based on Hindu mods. Messian was also well aware of the example of non diatonic writing in the Franco-Russian axis in the music of Sate, Debussy, Scrabbing, and Stravinsky. Marcel Dupé 
encouraged Messian to be methodical in his improvisations at the organ using unconventional mods. Of all these factors led Messian to create a series of mods based on symmetrical patterns. Messian called his mods mods of limited transposition because contrary to the diatonic scale or any other existing mod, they do not allow a total of 12 different transpositions in a chromatic system. Therefore, all of Messian's mods have a limited number of possible transpositions. After the number is reached, the following transposition repeats the same notes of a previous one, only changing the order in which the notes appear. It is important to notice that this mod do not have a predefined tonic or final. The tonal center always depends on the context of the music. The order the notes appear in the examples There are a total of seven modes. Messian explained in technique that it is mathematically impossible to create a new mod with limited transposition. All the other modes, the existing ones or any other invented in the future are transposable 12 times. He does not mention the hextonic scale which ha has also a limited number of transpositions. Um, the reason is probably because this, uh, this scholar pattern is found in his mod three, which contains two extra notes. Messian's mods are divided into small, smaller groups that are symmetrical. For example, mod one, the whole tone scale is divided into six groups of two notes each. Each group is composed of one interval of a whole step. Mod two is octatonic scale, is divided into four groups of three notes each. Each group is composed of two intervals, one half step and one whole step. The last note of every group in Messian's mods is also the first note of the following group. Thus, each group shares a note with its neighbors. Considering the fact that none of the notes in Messian's mods is a tonic or a final, they do not have a prime form. All forms are considered transpositions. Thus, for analytical conven con convenience, every mod starting on middle C is called first transposition. Every mod starting on major C is called second transposition and so forth. For example, mod two starting on C is called mod 21. Mod two starting on C major is called mod 22. And it, its last possible transposition is called 23. The fact that all scholar patterns of the mods are called transpositions has caused some confusion in scholarly research. It is unfortunately common to find sources mistakenly calling the 20. As we all know, Debussy had a huge influence on Messian's early, early work. However, his harmonic innovation, Messian's harmonic innovation, mostly based on his own months of limited transposition, are already in an advanced stage of development in the preludes. The other elements of his mature lang musical language, most particularly in the realm of rhythm and birdsong, appear in the preludes in what we can call an embryonic stage. The purpose of, of this lecture recital is to find out in which ways the preludes reflect their heritage from the French Impressionists 
particularly WC, and also to investigate how they represent a step further towards the formation of a new style. To fully understand these early pieces, we will give um, special attention to harmonic novelties, since these are the main elements that set them apart from any previous work. But I'm also interested in showing that Messian's interest in complex rhythmic structures and bird song already exists, existed in this work of his youth. In any case, the preludes are extraordinary piece of music, exploring many different possibilities to create new colors on the piano, achieving a variety of moods and evoking visual images. Appreciating and understanding the preludes is a key to comprehend how Messian's style evolved. By comparing Debussy's preludes and Messian's uh, preludes. Firstly, I want to talk about the use of polytonality in Messian's music and how he influenced by Debussy's preludes. Debussy tried to get rid of the large and small tonal system in addition to using the expansion of the tonal materials, he also made breakthroughs and attempts in the tonal layout and organizational techniques. Debussy's works used the polytonality technique. This kind of polytonality technique that uses different tonality in different voices is common in the works of composers in the 20th century. It is to break the original single tonal thinking to create a richer sense of space in the layering. In Debussy's creations, two or more traits are often used, or a number of overtune complexes are combined to construct harmony. This kind of bitonality technique is used as an important element in Debussy's music. Regular features often appear. Messian's mod of modes of limited transposition often uses mod conversion and mod composition to enrich the sound color of music and, and um, form color construct and sound composition from the horizontal and vertical directions. The conversion of the finite shift mod includes two situations. One is the conversion of different shifts within the same mod, and the other is the conversion of different mods. The compound thinking of the limited shift mod is similar to the usage of polytonality. Messian um, superimposes different mod vertically to form a polyphony technique. Through analysis, it can be seen that in Debussy's works, the organizational methods used, used in multiple mods are also diversified. Messian's The Mode of Limited Transposition was used in the early years with traces of functional tonality and the concept of tune center, centeredness. This section does not specifically cl classify the types of tonal mods, but summarize the, and compares the horizontal and vertical superimposing methods. Messian's eight preludes were the first works that tried to use the mod. The scale of the music was small, so two of them used use the same limited shift mod for the single use of the same shift. The first prelude, the Dolph, is based on the mod 22 from the beginning to the end. The mod 22 can be obtained through the pitch combination of first, two, fifth, bars, and the mod 22 is selected in the mod. Um, 
The major trade with E as the root node forms the key of E major. This is a relatively rare piece of the same shift that uses the same pattern in the whole music. It is also the first attempt to use the model of limited transposition in Messian's first published works. Firstly, I will play the, the first five bars of the first prelude of Messian called the Dove to give you a, a more vivid impression of the polonality. Now I'm going to play the seventh prelude of Messian called Complaints, the first three bars and also the first three sen the first sentence of this prelude to give you a comparison of the first prelude of Messian. complaint also uses a single mod. The work is based on mod two and three. The difference from the dove is that the mod of limited transposition of this work, the external tone of the mod is used as a decorative, as a decorative sound, but in a secondary position in the melody. So it will not affect the presentation of the mod. Use of modulation. Modulation can be divided into two situations. The modulation of the same mod and the modulation of different mods. It should be noted that because Messian's mod of limited transposition has the characteristic of an artificial mod, he is conceptually different from the traditional tones, such as the medieval mod and the five-tone mod. Therefore, we will not make too many divisions on the types of organizational materials here and only summarize from the similarities in organizational methods. The modulation of the same mod can be understood in the tonal organization of WC as the, as the modulation of different modes of the same place system in the five tone mod, or the modulation of different modes of the same tonic. For example, here is the, is the 13th bar of the girl with the flocks in here. From the example that we can see, the girl with flux in here from WC is in the G minor seven tone mod and the FB, FB9 minor sound in the melody is the G minor Lydia seventh level in bars 15, 14 to 15. In Messian's prelude, the transitions between different displacements of the same limited displacement mod include the following pieces of work. For example, the first example shows that the impalpable sounds of a dream, section seven to eight, switch from mod 21 to mod 23, 23 through the second degree downward models. Although Debussy tried his best to get rid of the confinement of the major and the minor tonal system in terms of tonality, he used the new tonality categories of harmonic tonality 
and continuous tonality. However, these tonal categories are only different from the characteristics of the traditional major and minor system in terms of expression and thinking. But these new tonal categories are not completely separated from the concept of tonal. Under this concept, Debussy used a variety of mod skills in his music. In Messian's creation in the first half of the 20th century, the traces of the functional system in his works have been weakened compared to WC. The 12 levels have independent meanings in Messian's uh, mod of limited transposition. The shift mod can be combined with tonal or atonal factors. When combined with the tonal factor, the traditional thinking in the tonal period appears under the control of the limited shift mod. Although the two composers use different mod materials, they have similarities in the way they organize mods. Following by that, I want to talk about the similarity of the texture between Dead Leaves and of, of Debussy and the Dove of Messiaen. Texture is a combination of horizontal and vertical in the music structure. From the phono monophonic texture of the chant in the Middle Ages to the poly polyphonic multi-voice texture of the Baroque period, even to the texture of melody and harmony accompaniment in the tonal music of the classical romantic period, the texture evolves along with the composition. The technique of composition is constantly evolving. The traditional polytonic texture and the main tone texture of melody plus harmony in Debussy and Messiaen's works are all involved, so I won't discuss it in details here. For Debussy, the organization of the various parts in the vertical direction in his music has, refers, has, has, has produced a layered from the texture. Texture stratification refers to the independent development of multiple voice, voices, parts according to their own line logic to generate an overall hierarchical texture form. The example showing the Messian heritage Debussy's concept and the concept of hierarchical texture in his early prelude composing, combining the respective forms of multi-voices to a form of multi-layered texture. The left example is from Debussy's Dead Leaves, section 9 to 10. The body is divided into three levels, bass level, harmony level, and melody level. The bass layer of low part is the center, tone D. The middle harmony layer is an open arrangement of diminished trades and the melody layer of a high part is a triplet, seminet, melody line. Messian's prelude, the dove, also makes extensive use of the form of the texture stratification. For example, the dove on the right, um, section one to three, this thin melody is composed of three levels, accompaniment level, melody level, color layer, and accompaniment layer of the low part is a deco de decomposed E major, sixth chord, which implies the tonality of the music. The middle layer is an octave melody line, which is based on Messian's favorite fourth degree and minor second interval relationship. The core pitch of the melody, the high part is a parallel trade progression in the mid, in the mode of limited transposition 22. The level has a strong color rendering. Messian's prelude also has this kind of texture layering writing technique in the rest of his works. And the texture layering technique is still used in his subsequent piano works. This kind of texture layered writing method can organize different pitches and materials. 
and the respective parts in the horizontal direction have independent logic and meaning. And the combination of the vertical direction makes the sound of the music, music form a whole. In the music of Debussy and Messiaen, the hazy and dreamy sound brought by the stratification of textures is exactly the aesthetics concept of French music. Although Messiaen was influenced by Debussy in the early stage of creation, his musical language has many features similar to those of Debussy's. But it also shows his own unique creative techniques, especially in the use of modes of limited transposition. Messiaen applies artificial tuning to his creation more comprehensively and systematically and combines tune, tu tuning the color theory and combines color with composition techniques in a more orderly manner, forming a unique aesthetic effect. To sum up this lecture recital, we firstly talk about Messiaen's early life and introduced his synesthesia, so we had an understanding of his musical language. Second, we introduced the modes of limited transposition, so we have a deeper understanding of his music. Followed by that, we compare the preludes of Debussy's and Messiaen's in order to have uh, in order to understand how Debussy influenced Messiaen's music and what are the similarities of their style. And then we finally can come to our own conclusion of how to approach Messiaen's preludes through the understanding of Debussy's, understand, uh, Debussy's preludes. I hope you all enjoyed this lecture and I hope you all learned something from today's lecture. Now we can finish this lecture by listening to one of the Messias Prelude. Here is the bibliography of this lecture recital. Thank you very much.